Today we are going to be drawing muscular torsos. So if you imagine an actual muscle over there, then... Nice. We'll be starting with very simple structure and then we'll be translating that structure to an actual anatomical drawing. So if you are someone who struggles with that subject, then we can go to the Photoshop. Okay, so before we dive into today's lesson, we need to make sure that we are able to draw boxes, cylinders and organic forms in perspective. With that, we'll combine this into a mannequin that will serve us as a base for our studies. There are many different versions of one uh, that people use. You can use Loomis, Hampton, Riley. You can try them all, but in time, you will figure out which one works for you best. Mine is basically a combination of Ahmed al Dori and Michael Hampton, since those were like two most influential people uh, when I was starting doing art. Okay, but how do we go from this boxy mannequin to this anatomical one? Well, random citizen, I'm glad you asked. First, we will have to figure out the bone structure that is underneath the skin. To do that, we need to learn about landmarks. Those are basically pointy things that you can see below your skin level and you can use those as guidelines for your drawing. For the front torso view, we will use clavicles, sternum, bottom of the rib cage, and of the iliac crest and pubic bones on the pelvis. You absolutely don't have to remember those names, I literally googled them when I was writing script for this video. Alright, so now we know that we need to add those landmarks to our box mannequin, and let's go and explore muscles so we can progress without drawing further. We will start with simple drawing of a rib cage. We will add the lines to show where the clavicles are, two cylinders that will serve as arms, cylinder for a neck, simple head. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> he looks like a disappointed Bruce Willis. And I usually use those lines for a pelvis simplification. Now we will slap some meat on that bones. <laughs> and then we will simplify them into basic shapes and volumes. With chest, I will start with a shape that is basically a triangle attached to a skewed rectangle. And a thing to note is that it starts at the half of the rib cage attached to a sternum, then attaches to a bottom of a clavicle and finishes in one third of the arm. Deltoid is kind of kicked triangle that attaches to a clavicle, scapula on the back and also around one third of the arm covering some part of the chest muscle. Latissimus is biggest back muscle that we will see from the front. It attaches up the base of spine in the back and in the front is being squeezed between delts, pecs and biceps. Then we go to a neck which is basically a group of muscles that I like to simplify into a cylinder and two triangles. Abs are basically two groups of muscles there. Let's call them side abs and front abs. Side abs wrap around the bottom of your rib cage and end up at the top of your pelvis. And front abs start below your chest and end up at the pubic bone. All right, so with shapes and placement done, we can add some volume. So now all of the muscles look 3D and all we added is a little perspective in the form of wrapping lines. To study and learn those landmarks, I would use Michael Hampton's book or any anatomical atlas, but for the best result, I would use a combination of those two. It will give you an overview of function, volume and gesture of those muscles. Oof, that was a 3 minute anatomy speedrun, but seriously, those were just the basics and a simple roadmap to get you started. Okay, now we'll apply what we learned in a real drawing. I'm starting here with a really simple boxy ribcage, few lines for the pelvis. Uh, I'm trying to draw like a really simple head. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about this one at this stage. And then I also add a couple of cylinders for the arms. Okay, so with the basic mannequin done, what I really like to do afterwards is to map muscle placements. I always like to first connect torso and the pelvis. And a really pro tip, a space between pelvis and rib cage is exactly one leg apart. Then I work on the chest muscles and be mindful that volume of the pectoralis will overlap itself in a perspective. So we won't see a connection between his far pec and arm. Then I add clavicles, latissimus, some lines for the abs and a little line for the oblique. I also sketch out some arm anatomy so I have a better thumbnail and if you want to learn how to draw arms, please let me know down in the comments. Alright, 
So we are mostly done. We went from simple mannequin and added basic anatomy to the drawing. As you see, muscle placement is going to be the same in every perspective. What will change is gesture. And if you want less muscular drawing, then I'll tell you that we are gravely mistaken, but to achieve that you just need to have less volume, but the connections are going to stay the same. So, to have our drawing part finished, we will lower the opacity, add a new layer, and to make that anatomy believable, we will follow our silhouette, and outline only a few parts of our muscles that are overlapping each other. Nope. Here's me trying to draw a clean line, nope. very pro nope. indeed. And also here I am defining intersection between serratus and latissimus. Go and check that muscle in anatomy atlas, it's so cool and gives you that shark gills look. Then we will detail the chest. To give it more muscular and lean look, we will add few lines across muscle fibers. Just be mindful to not overdo this or it will look like a crack on the sidewalk. As a bonus step, you can lower opacity again and define design even more. But be careful, because if you do it too much, your drawing will end up as stiff as my back after editing this video. Now I will add some jungle hair because I'm like, you're sim for his voice. Okay, so here are a few quick tips on what I do to block in some colors before I go into the rendering. I always start with basic skin color and I use lasso tool to fill my silhouette. I use gradient on top and the bottom using a soft brush to give myself a little bit of color and value variation. Then I crop the image before I get a snow blind left from this white canvas. And one of my favorite block in techniques is using a lasso tool with combination of the airbrush to give my drawing a nice volumetric feeling. One of my last steps before rendering is adding some color variation to the painting. I overlay sky color on the parts that are facing up, some reds in places that have stronger blood flow, and I use heavy bristle brush to do so. And then I erase like 80% of it, just to leave some hint of color. With the base done, we can pick our favorite scam brush and finish the rendering. And bam, we have a guy that looks like a Zhongli and Baki Han Mahada child. Anyway, thanks for watching. Here is the simple painting. It took me around 2 to 3 hours just for the rendering. And if you like the content, please subscribe. If you want to learn how to draw forests, click here. And I'll see you in the next one.